Now, in order to add the Pokemon number and a background image to our Pokemon card, we are going to create a new interface that will take values from the index Pokemon interface that we received from the Pokemon API and custom values that we will add ourselves. We will name it List Pokemon. For the images, we will use the Pokemon API images hosted on GitHub. Let's take, for instance, the image for Pikachu. It has a base URL, slash, and the number of the Pokemon in this case is 25, and .png at the end. Let's add the base URL to our constants file. We will use this constant to retrieve the images for the Pokemon card. Now, when we receive the results from the Pokemon API, we are going to convert each indexed Pokemon in the results array to a list Pokemon, adding the Pokemon number and image URL to it. For this, let's create a new function that will receive an indexed Pokemon as input and return a list Pokemon. To get the Pokemon number, we are going to use the URL of the indexed Pokemon. As you can see, it's at the end of the string. We are going to remove the first part of the URL, which will leave only the Pokemon number and a slash at the end. And after that, we are going to remove the slash leaving only the number. And finally, we are going to convert the remaining number, which is currently a string, to a number. To replace the first part, we are going to use the replace function on the URL. This function receives the string you want to replace and the string you want to replace it with. We will pass the Pokemon API base URL and replace it with an empty string. This will leave us with the Pokemon number and a slash. Now we will use the replace function again and replace the slash with an empty string. And finally, we will convert the remaining string to a number using the parsed int function. Let's create a list Pokemon object that we will return from this function. It will take the Pokemon name and the Pokemon URL from the indexed Pokemon. And we are going to use the Pokemon number we just created and the base images URL to add the image URL to it. We will also add the Pokemon number as an attribute. I made the Pokedex number a string instead of a number, so let's fix that. Now let's go back to our fetch Pokemon function and map each indexed Pokemon from the Pokemon API response to an indexed Pokemon using our indexed Pokemon to list Pokemon function. Now we will set the Pokemon state array to this array of indexed Pokemon. We have an error because I forgot to return the list Pokemon from the indexed Pokemon to list Pokemon function, so let's fix that. Now we need to change the Pokemon list props to receive an array of list Pokemon instead of indexed Pokemon. 
Let's do the same for the Pokemon card component. We also need to change the Pokemon's array of the used Pokemon's hook. With this, we can now use these two extra values on our Pokemon card component. Let's add a card media component that will receive the Pokemon image URL as a parameter. We will limit the height to 100 and use the object fit attribute to better fit the images inside the card. Now the Pokemon cards look way better. Now we are going to use the next URL from the Pokemon API response to fetch the next Pokemons of the list. After setting the Pokemons array, we are going to set the next URL state using the next URL from the Pokemon API response. Next, we need to return the fetch Pokemon function from the use Pokemon hook so we can fetch more Pokemon from our home component. Let's also add a boolean value that will check if the next URL is not null, so we can know if there's still more Pokemon to fetch or if we have arrived at the end of the total Pokemon list. Back in the home component, we are going to import the hasmore Pokemon Boolean value and the fetch next Pokemon function. If hasmore Pokemon is true, we are going to show a button. And if the user clicks it, it's going to execute the fetch next page function. Right now, the fetch next Pokemon function is replacing the previous Pokemon array with the new one. But what we need to do is add the new array to the previous array, so let's fix that using the spread operator. We are creating a new array combining the elements of the previous Pokemon array with the elements of the new Pokemon array. Now the function is working correctly and the list of Pokemon keeps getting bigger and bigger. The Pokemon card could look better, so let's add a background color. We are going to calculate the correct color using the Pokemon image on the card, so we need to install an additional library called Fast Average Color. Let's create a utils folder and a colors.ts file. We are going to create a function to calculate the background image. This function is going to take the URL of an image and use the fast average color library to calculate an average color for us. This color object has different attributes, so we are only going to return the hex attribute of the color. This is an alphanumerical string of six characters. In case the library gives an error, we are simply going to return null. 
Let's go back to our Pokemon card component and add a Pokemon color state. That can be either a string or a null. Now let's create a get Pokemon color that will simply call the get color from URL function and update the Pokemon color state. We are going to use the use effect hook to call this function at the start of the component's life cycle. Next, let's use that Pokemon color string and pass it to our Pokemon card background. Let's run the project again to see if it's working. As you can see, the background color of each Pokemon card is calculated using the Pokemon image. To make it look better, let's also add a new hover effect to the cards. For that, let's add a card action area to our Pokemon card and move the card media and card content inside it. Now the card gives a nice hover effect when the mouse passes over it. Let's also add the Pokemon number to the card. And finally, we are going to use the different flex attributes to center the text of the card. Now we have a list of colored Pokemon cards that we can keep expanding. This was part 2 of the React Pokedex series. In the next video we will add a detailed page of each Pokemon that you can access when clicking a Pokemon card. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Feel free to ask for tutorial suggestions on the comment section. Until next time!